Let's talk to Craig Earlham. He is the Senior Market Analyst at Alanda. Very good morning to you, young Craig. Good morning. We were setting off there, very quiet Easter. Um, had people groaning in the studio yesterday that you know this week is very dead in terms mm-hmm. of the financial markets, with the exception, I guess, of the non-farm payroll. Um, currency markets generally pretty quiet. Yeah, it's we, we, the, the market's very politically led right now. Um, the trade war, the tariffs from Donald Trump, the retaliatory tariffs uh, from Beijing. Um, it's having a big impact on on equity markets. So we are seeing very big swings. We saw two to three percent declines in the U.S. equity markets on Monday, uh, when a lot of markets in Europe were shut. Um, so there's no lack of volatility here, and we saw the same in Europe yesterday, playing catch up. The FX markets, on the other hand, are seeing a different story altogether. We are seeing a lot of range-bound trading, very slow, gradual moves, extensions of moves we've seen previously. We're not seeing the same kind of volatility that we maybe saw earlier on in the year. I do expect it to return. I think it's worth pointing that out. We've just had a a severe lack of economic data, a lack of central bank events. We've not had um, any shocks where the Brexit situation passed quite smoothly. A lot of these things which we would typically associate with providing market volatility in the currency space just hasn't happened in the political situation, which can. And as you'll see why I've chosen a yen chart, this is one of the few areas where we do see this volatility flow through because the yen's a safe haven currency, so it tends to benefit from these uh, quite, uh, quite volatile periods. It just has really taken a, a little bit of the sting out of currency markets. But like I said, I do expect it to return and hopefully sooner rather than later. And maybe the jobs report later in the week will provide that little catalyst uh, for a bit of excitement. Because at the moment, the last few days, the last week and a half really, has been quite dull. Dull. <laughs> Don't like to hear that. Right, let's turn our attention then to the chart. If we can put that up on the screen. The Great British Pound against the Japanese Yen. Daily candlestick. Um, Ichimoku clouds. Um, if you're trading below, in theory, it's bearish. If you're trading above it, it's bullish. Um, what are your observations here? Well, I mean, this pair was bullish for quite some time. Uh, we did break below the cloud previously, and I know we've talked about this chart on a number of videos, so I won't go into too much detail on each individual move. Um, if anyone wants to know that, they can look back at the previous videos. Yep. Um, we have had a bit of rebound in this pair. Uh, it still remains bearish. I know people are looking at the pound right now and seeing plenty of reason for optimism and bullishness. The economy is ticking along nicely. The Brexit transition has been agreed. We're seeing, expecting a rate hike from the Bank of England in May. Uh, and they are all positive factors, but they are largely priced in. So you wonder what's got that, what would provide that extra little uh, a little bit of a bump to the upside to take it back through the cloud. And you can see here some of the very clear technical signals that we get. We've had the series of higher highs. We had starting in the middle of March, we had then three higher highs um, successively uh, heading into April uh, and higher lows as well. So te- technically very nice. You want higher highs, higher lows, yep. typical, typical short term bull- bullish trend. And then we reach that 50 fib, which is an area highlighted the high of the pair to the recent low. A potential area of resistance. I was hoping we'd get back to the 61.8, given that it lines up with the top of the cloud. Again, nice technical move, prior support, turn resistance. But we've fallen a bit shy there. Now, if we look at the MACD and the stochastic along the bottom, these are momentum indicators. These are the things which typically you're looking at to confirm the price action. Higher highs in price, higher highs in the momentum. It shows the momentum is growing yep. as the move is occurring. What we've actually seen in the last couple of situations, though, is that as the higher high has happened, we've either seen it plateauing in the MACD histogram, uh, we've seen it flattening now in the MACD moving averages, the stochastic um, is starting to fall short. Obviously, we've not seen another higher high recently, so you can't take too much from the fact that we're seeing a lower high now in the stochastic and the MACD. But it also doesn't suggest that if we do see another higher high being made, say around 151, which I think is a very pivotal level, it wouldn't suggest that the momentum is carrying it. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a series of red flags, these red flags that suggest, yes, we've seen a nice bullish move since uh, early on in March, but it doesn't look like it has the legs. And the fact that we're seeing it signs that it doesn't have the legs heading into a pivotal resistance zone, a zone that if we rotate off that Ichimoku cloud, if we rotate off the 50 fib, that prior support, new resistance, that is seen as confirmation of the initial breakout which we had back in early February and is a bearish confirmation signal. So that's 
technically what we'd like to see because a, a break back through the cloud would uh, be a bit more negative. That would suggest we're back in choppy market territory, um, potentially signaling a move back towards those kind of 157, 156 highs that we were seeing previously. But from a purely technical standpoint, it'd be very nice to see uh, a rotation off the 151s breaking, uh, remaining below the clouds and confirming that initial break. Okay, so finally, so we've got a, a number of reasons to think that this been maybe an area of resistance, okay? In terms of the clouds in your experience, okay, because this is a, a, a Japanese cross, mm -hmm. okay, would you expect basically, we've, ar we've argued about sort of um, um, the whole crowd looking at the same chart, mm -hmm. would you think the sellers will come in on, in that, into that cloud? I think there's a good chance that people are looking at that cloud as a possible rotation yeah. point. And if I was a seller, yeah. uh, I'd be looking at that cloud and looking for opportunity. I, I, I would maybe be looking for opportunity inside that cloud. Of course, this is an advice because uh, I'm not here to like prophesize yeah, about what's going to happen. The, the but if, if I was a seller into this situation and I see that we're losing momentum inside that cloud and we're seeing maybe a nice reversal set up or something like that, then that could encourage me to, um, uh, to as that that is the opportunity that, we're, that I'm waiting for. Um, and what we are looking for as technical traders is signs and signals that these things are uh, coming true. And the fact that we've got this nice little technical setup, yep. you would hope, will be completed by that nice little rotation off. And from a fundamental perspective, the environment's looking a little bit more tetchy right now. We've got the trade war perspective. Um, Donald Trump's now proposed these new $50 million in tariffs. China's already said that they are preparing countermeasures yet again. So this trade war is heating up a little bit. Um, the environment is primed for risk aversion. We've seen now we're back in correction territory in US markets after the tech sell-off. Again, risk aversion. And risk aversion typically favours the end. So maybe that's part of the story, which is why this move is running out of well, steam. It sound, sounds like the technicals are agreeing with the fundamentals. It's always nice when these things line up. Understood. On that note, Craig, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.